Let's call it for what it is. Bobby Douglas was an absolutely terrible quarterback. With a few exceptions, the Bears have had seemingly no luck at the quarterback position since Sid Luckman retired, and Bobby Douglas is just another name that exemplifies that. Despite getting chosen in the second round of the 1969 NFL Draft, he was atrocious in his 10 seasons in the NFL, going 16-36-1 as a starter while completing 43% of his passes, throwing 36 touchdowns, and 64 interceptions, and never finishing inside the top 10 of any positive statistical category for quarterbacks. In fact, he's had three separate seasons where his passer rating was worse than if he would have done nothing but spike the ball into the ground on every single play. In short, he was bad. But there was one game where he looked amazing. There was one game where he was so good, in fact, that he was named the league's offensive player of the week. For some perspective, the week before he won it, Bob Greasy won the award, and the week after he won it, Len Dawson won the award. Sandwiched in between two Hall of Fame quarterbacks and two of the greatest to ever do it was Bobby Douglas, who had what was without a doubt the best game of his career. And he did it, somehow, while playing with a broken wrist. And this is the story behind Bobby Douglas and his improbable game. First, we need some context heading into this game. It's November 22, 1970, and the Buffalo Bills are traveling to Wrigley Field to take on the Chicago Bears. Oddly enough, this is not the first time I've made a video on the 1970 Bears, as not too long ago, I made a video about something that happened during one of their games against the Lions that year. Click the card in the upper right corner to learn more about that. For Buffalo, this is a must win. They sit at 3-5-1, and, and have only lost one of their last four games following a 1-4 start they might be starting to find their rhythm, and they're two back of the Kansas City Chiefs for that lone wildcard spot. With the loss here, they're all but eliminated with four games to play. But with a win, they're right in the thick of things. However, this game isn't too important for Chicago, as they've got long shot odds to make the postseason. The Bears currently sit at three and six, three back of a wildcard spot, and with no shot at winning the division, since the defending NFL champion Minnesota Vikings are eight and one. And one of the reasons why they're out of it already is because of an anemic offense. Chicago had scored just 133 points through nine games, which was the second worst total in the NFC and was only ahead of the New Orleans Saints. In that disastrous stretch included a shutout loss against the Vikings, where they had six turnovers, a loss on Monday Night Football against the Lions, where they had eight first downs and 38 rushing yards, and another loss to the Lions where they had four turnovers. Jack Concannon was the starting quarterback for all of these games. And with the season now over, head coach Jim Dooley decided to bench Concannon and put in Bobby Douglas and see what the second year quarterback had. Now Douglas played a lot for the Bears the year before, and he was not good. In fact, he was so bad that Concannon took the job from him. But now, he had a second chance to prove himself. And it didn't look good at first for Douglas, as in the first quarter, the Bills got on the scoreboard first after he threw a really ugly pick six to Butch Berg. But once he got that obligatory pick out of his system, he went off. Chicago got their first points of the game when Douglas found Dick Gordon on a 36-yard touchdown. And then on the ensuing drive, Douglas got injured. He felt pain in his wrist, which he thought was just a sprain. Tis but a scratch, or tis but a flesh wound, depending on how you want to look at it. So he stayed in the game despite the injury and proceeded to continue lighting it up. Despite the injury and despite 22 mile per hour winds in 43 degree weather, he found the end zone three more times. He hit Jim Seymour on a 36 yard touchdown to make it 14 to six at the half. Then found Seymour again on a 53 yard touchdown in the third quarter to make it a three possession game at 21 to six. And then had the dagger in the fourth quarter when he found Dick Gordon on a 28 yard touchdown. Chicago won the game 31-13, and Douglas threw for 196 yards and four touchdowns. Before going any further, I want to put into perspective just how good this game was for Bobby Douglas. This was the only time in his career that he threw for more than two touchdowns in a game. His passer rating of 95 was the highest passer rating he ever had in his career in a home win. The 196 passing yards was the third most he ever had in a game that he started, 
and his yards per pass attempt was the second most of his career in a game where he threw at least 10 passes. Again, Douglas was not a good quarterback, far from it in fact, but he had an exceptional game against Buffalo. And as it turns out, when the medical team looked at Douglas afterwards, he threw those final three touchdown passes with a broken wrist. Douglas was in serious pain the day after the game when he tried to put on his shirt and said that he was disappointed by the injury. He said, those things just happen. That's fate. But gosh darn, I'd hate to be standing around feeling frustrated when I'm so anxious to play. Douglas did not play another game the rest of the season as he was sidelined with that wrist injury. Bobby Douglas never reached the heights that he had in that game ever again. He played 91 games in his career and was no better than average in 90 of them, with a lot of them being on the lower end. But it's crazy that the one time he actually had a good game and won NFL Offensive Player of the Week, he did it while playing with a broken wrist. Be sure to like this video, ring the notification bell, and subscribe down below if you haven't already as it helps the channel out a lot. And be sure to check out Twitch every Tuesday night at 9 p.m. Eastern for your chance to play NFL trivia and win cash prizes. Link in the description below. If you want to see videos like this condensed down to 60 seconds, then follow me on TikTok at Jaguar9 and subscribe to 60 Second NFL History on YouTube. Also, special thanks to all of our Patreon supporters for helping with the channel. Your support is greatly appreciated. So you can become a patron and request future video topics in the description below.